Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, we are going to take an entire project worth of tracks from drums, bass, guitars, vocals, synths. We're going to, number one, use Smart Tempo to identify the varying tempo over time of this project. And then we're going to use Flex and Smart Tempo to conform this entire project to a consistent tempo. Now, in my opinion, Smart Tempo is nothing short of amazing. But I find that many users get kind of overwhelmed by the process. They don't get the results that they're looking for from the process. And it can be frustrating, right? So that's why today's video has come about. I want to help you get through this process. And this is a project that I've been working on with a reader. And he had the very same question. Hey, Chris, this project should be at 120 BPM. How do I achieve that? So we're going to do that today. Now, I do want to point out before we get started, two things. Number one, this process of using smart tempo to identify the tempo and then conform everything to a consistent tempo is going to require a few steps. And that's fine. You know, it's not a lot of steps, but it's going to require a few steps and some double checking. And that brings up number two. I think many users get frustrated by smart tempo or don't believe that the functions in logic such as flex can really achieve what they're after in terms of trying to conform a specific project to a specific tempo. And it's not that logic can't, but I think they expect logic to be able to do this in one shot, just once and done and move on with the rest of your life. And I have found with any sort of automated process, whether it's quantizing, uh, drum replacement, pitch correction, I have found that there is no automated process using a computer that doesn't require some degree of double checking or intervention from the person that is using that automated feature. It's just a fact of life that, you know, a computer can get you 80, 90% of the way there, but it's going to require some double checking and some fine tuning on your part. And especially when we are using something like time stretching to adjust the tempo of an entire project worth of audio, you might have to change some of the flex modes for certain tracks. You might have to clean up some of the markers that have been created because they're creating some artifacts. You might have to bounce some of those tracks in place so you can make some edits because there's an artifact or two, you know, in a decaying guitar note or something. And that's very easy to clean up, but it will require double checking on your part. And I just want to point that out. Cool. So let's dig into the project right now. Right now, standard rock fair. Let's take a listen. I'll introduce the metronome so we can get a sense for, you know, how on 120 BPM is this project or how off. Let's take a listen and I'll bring in the metronome. Now, a great song, but nowhere near 120 BPM, right? So we need to use Smart Tempo to figure out what the heck is the tempo of this project to begin with. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to use the drum tracks. I'm going to use whatever track is the most reliable in terms of kind of the timing of the entire project. Generally, this is drums, but it could be an acoustic guitar. It could be a tambourine. You're looking for rhythmic activity and reliable rhythmic activity. I can guarantee, though, that Logic is not going to be able to pull the correct tempo out of the gate. So let's try it right now. I'm going to choose the acoustic guitar just to illustrate. Let's open the editor using the scissors and let's go to Smart Tempo. And right here, we can already see that the acoustic guitar is already, you know, locked to 120 BPM, even though it's not actually at 120 BPM. So let's see if we can go to edit within the Smart Tempo editor. And let's remove the original recording tempo and analyze again. Let's see what happens here. Cool. We have some variation now, I suspect. Yep. If we just slide the playhead along the acoustic guitar, we're seeing tempo variations. And this is the point that we're going to have to scrape any recording tempo data from these tracks. And Logic is very good about embedding tempo data. But, you know, in this case, it embedded the wrong tempo data. So I'm going to select all of the tracks in the session and go to edit, go down to tempo and then remove original recording tempo. So it's going to take a second. It's going to ask, do you really want to delete the file tempo information? I do. Let's click OK. And now Logic should have no tempo data for any of these tracks. Let's select one of the tracks, open the editor, go to smart tempo. And right here we can see that there's no tempo data. We need to analyze these tracks before we do that. I'm actually going to create a multi-track set of the drums. So I have overheads, 
I have a kick, a snare, and toms. I'm going to select each of these tracks. I'm going to go to edit, go down to tempo, and we're going to create a smart tempo multi-track set. And Logic is making sure, do you want to select these tracks? Yes, I do. And let's just click update. All right, next up, I'm going to create a group for these drums. I want to make sure that they're quantized locked for whatever comes next. So in the group field in the mixer here, I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to call it drum. And under settings, I'm just going to make sure to enable the editing and quantize locked audio options. All right, from here, let's select any one of these tracks. We can see that the editor is now open to the smart tempo pane. We can see some variation is occurring. And if we just, you know, take a look across the different tracks, it should be identical across these tracks, right? At this point, what we want to do is, is we want to take the tempo from these drums and apply it to the entire project. If we open the Smart Tempo Editor and go to Edit and go down, we should be able to apply the region tempo to the project tempo. But before we do this, we want to make sure to change a particular Smart Tempo setting. So let's go up to Keep Tempo under the BPM in the LCD display. And let's go to Smart Tempo Project Settings. And we're just going to go down here to the Export Tempo Resolution, and we're going to set it to Beats because we're going to get a better resolution of these drums across the tempo track lane. At this point, we can now go to the Smart Tempo Editor, go to Edit, and go down to Apply the Region Tempo to the Project Tempo. Here we go. We want to make sure to align the downbeat to the nearest project downbeat and maintain the relative positions of all the other regions to the drums. So I've enabled both. Click apply. And now if we open the tempo track lane, the global track lanes, we can see a varying tempo across the entire project. Let's just solo the drums for now and take a listen to what this sounds like with the click. Okay, let's bounce around just to double check that it really is that tempo throughout the song. Go over here. Now this tempo leads me to believe that maybe the song wasn't actually at 120 BPM, right? Because it's hovering around 150. It's like between 140, to almost up to 160. So... This is something to keep in mind when we smooth out the tempo for the entire project. Next up, I'm going to squish up the project just to make sure that everything hasn't gone funky. Let's take a listen with the click to the entire project with all of the instruments, just to make sure. That sounds good to me. Sometimes flex and follow, which is in the region inspector over here. Sometimes it could be activated, you know, a little prematurely. So I'm making sure that that is off just by looking at each of the tracks. Additionally, you might see the regions shrink or expand because there's still tempo data embedded in those regions. So just taking a look around, does everything look as it should? This arpeggiator only plays at that one moment. That's why we don't see it go to the end of the project. Same with the intro guitar. After double checking all of our tracks, we're going to want to turn on flex and follow for all of the regions in this session because when we, you know, eliminate 99% of these tempo nodes and set a consistent tempo for the whole project, we want the regions to expand or contract to follow the project tempo. So we need to enable flex and follow to do that. So I'm going to select all of the tracks in the session. And just to be sure here, I want to turn off this Q button for my toms and overheads. I want the kick and the snare to be the leader for the entire drum group when it comes to editing and flexing. Now we can select all the tracks in the session. I'm just selecting the first track lane, going down to the bottom, holding shift and clicking. We've selected everything in the session. Let's squash things up a bit just to make sure everything works out as I expect. And we go to the region inspector right over here. And we're going to turn on flex and follow for all these regions. Check it out. We can already see that there's some movement going on. That's fine. It's going to take a bit because Logic has to analyze the transients of every single track again. So bear with me. I'm going to speed up the video and then we'll dig into how to fix these regions that have 
you know, shrunk down unnecessarily. Okay, we're all through analyzing transients in logic, but again, we have regions that have shrunk and changed their tempo. And if we take a lesson, you can hear it's going to be just craziness. Actually doesn't sound bad at all. That's kind of weird. But again, let's clean up these regions so they're the appropriate length for the tempo. We're going to select the regions we selected already. For some reason, it just didn't translate. And I'm going to go up to edit again and go down to tempo and remove the original recording tempo. Let's do it. And again, yes, we want to do this and take a second. All right. Everything is now at the appropriate length for the song. Let's take a listen again. Beautiful. And we can see flex and follow is still enabled. If we turn on flex mode, we can see all sorts of tempo lines that have been applied to our regions. And I've enabled flex by using command F, but you could use the button right here as well. All right. Now we're going to clean up 90%, 99% of these tempo nodes, and we're going to set a consistent tempo. We're going to go up to the tempo area in the global track lanes, and we're going to create a new tempo set just so we can refer back to the original tempo if we decide we need to go back. I'm going to create a new tempo set. Perfect. We'll just call this new tempo set. And we can flip between the two very easily. Perfect. And we can already see that some things have changed because the tempo has gone from, you know, this varying tempo to 120 BPM. Let's take a listen and hear, was this project actually supposed to be at 120 BPM? Now, I think it's clear that maybe not, right? It's very slow. It's getting artifacty because we're trying to take it from like 150 down to 120. That's a 30 BPM change. And for an arrangement like this for audio, it's going to be pretty tough. Let's go ahead and set the tempo to 150. Still going to be consistent. We can see that information in terms of flex is updating. Let's take a listen. Feeling a little sluggish at moments. Let's even bump it up to 155. And I'll bump it down to 152. Let's kind of split the difference here. All right. So we're done, right? Let's skip around to different sections of the song. Not sounding terrible, right? But I do want to point out, this is where that whole idea where logic is going to require some double checking and intervention from you, the user. Because if we take a look at some of the modes, the flex modes that are being used to compress and expand the audio with the tempo, for drums, we have slicing. That's totally what I would expect. Percussion, we have slicing. Cool. Acoustic guitar, we have slicing, which... That could be debatable. Let's take a listen to the acoustic guitar. Sound a little funky, right? Let's go in and let's change this maybe to polyphonic or rhythmic. Take a listen. Now we do have some held out guitar chords. So I want to keep that in mind when it comes to flex modes because rhythmic creates kind of like a pumping action. I'm going to stick with polyphonic. I think it sounds the best. Let's move on. Let's take a listen to the bass, right? So we got slicing for the bass. That's not the mode I would choose. Not terrible, but I'm going to select monophonic because it's one note at a time. We might even want to pitch correct the bass. Just might. Cool. And we can continue down the list. I mean, electric guitars and electric guitars can be a tough thing to manage when it comes to flexing. 
If this was just a clean guitar run through amp designer, no problem. But distorted guitars with a lot of gain and distortion doesn't like to play well with flex. It doesn't really like it that much. So we're going to see if this, you know, if we can make it a little better and if it's even, you know, usable in its current state. Okay, not terrible. Let's set it to polyphonic. And if we jam the lead vocals, slicing is not going to cut it. I'm going to select all the vocal tracks because I can tell you right now that ain't going to work. So let's take a listen. All I got to do is turn the key and breathe. You know, so we'll set those to monophonic. And monophonic seems to go hand in hand with flex pitch. So that's, you know, it's something to keep in mind. Anything you want to pitch correct potentially using flex pitch or melodyne, probably going to want it in monophonic mode. Okay, let's take a listen again. All I got to do is turn the key and breathe. Now you're hearing some, you know, garbled mess in there, right? With some of the flex or smart tempo edits. So this is something else to keep in mind. You may want to remove some of these tempo markers from the audio after the fact. After you've conformed the tempo to a consistent tempo, you might need to clean some of it up because it's causing these sort of effects, especially on long held out notes or chords. So I'm going to open my mouse tools. I'm going to set my command click tool to the eraser. And let's just remove some of those smart tempo notes. Turn the key and breathe. Okay, so there's still a little something. That's a okay. I might want to, you know, lock the tempo for this note. If I do, if I click on the upper half of the region, check it out. Oh, it actually didn't cause me any problems. There we go. And then once we start to move it, we lose all of our smart tempo you know, data that keeps, you know, this region locked to the tempo. So let's back it up. Let me make sure to only select the lead vocal as well, because I'm going to affect the other backing vocals I had selected. Instead, I'm going to back it up, select the lead vocal, and then hover my mouse in the bottom half of the region. And that will create three tempo markers. And then we can adjust the timing of that one word or phrase without, you know, ruining the tempo across the entire region. So if we unsolo everything, take a listen. Be such a sweet release. All I got to do is turn the key and breathe. Right, so that's what I'm saying. You're going to have to double check. You're going to have to listen through each of your tracks. And I want to bring your attention to the end of the song because when I was, you know, preparing for this video, I noticed some funkiness on the very last chord that's held out at the end. You can hear that whoa, 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 whoa. That's because of these smart tempo markers that were created or flex markers created, transient markers because of smart tempo. So again, we'll pull up the eraser tool and I'll go through everything that I know is like a long held out note. Gang vocals probably don't want a bunch of tempo markers mucking them up. And then, oh. And then I also know that some of the guitars are kind of a mess because of this. So let's go to the distorted guitars. Let's hear where that last note is. So there's our distorted guitars. I'm just trying to, you know, clean it up till that, the end of the very end of the tail. And the clean guitar do the same thing. Let's take a listen. You hear that? You hear that distorted guitar on the left-hand side? Ugh, flex. That's A-OK. -okay. That's why I'm saying you got to double check. So we're going to bounce this guitar in place very quickly. We're doing a, you know, a fast and dirty approach to this. But I want to point out to you that you can clean this up and it's not going to be a big deal. So let's dig in to the newly bounced region. And we can see right there something funny is going on. OK, so let's... Just got to find a transient that kind of matches up with everything else. I'm going to switch to my marquee tool so I can chop this up. And I know that right around here, probably, we want to get rid of. And, you know, your mileage may vary. Maybe, you know, slicing up the region as I'm doing it is not going to match up with what 
you know, how long you want your guitar to ring out or piano or whatever. But just zoom way in here so we can line up waveform the best we can. And if I add a fade, let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Okay, we're not quite there yet. We, we are not out of the woods. So let's you know, match it up the best we can. So I think I'm still hanging on to a bit of crap here. So if we zoom way in here, let me get rid of B there. Okay, so that's way better. I think I still hear a tiny bit, so let's... Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's hear that in the mix now, so to speak, in the sauce. Take a listen to that last tail, right? You know, make no mistakes, this is a process. It requires effort and some time because, you know, we decided to not record to a click track. And now we're trying to use some magic, some mathematics in the background to make us sound like that we were playing to a consistent tempo the whole time. And, you know, you'll probably get 80% of the way there. That last 20% is on you to clean up and fine tune. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.